Okay, so lastly, just very quickly, I wanted to go through this, is some examples of broader systems level change. And this is not in the Milbank report, um, but this, was, this is some work that I've done with the Casey Foundation, University of Maryland, and I thought very appropriate given some of the work that you're currently doing here. Um, first, thinking about Massachusetts, there are a number of different sort of systems level changes that are happening. Uh, again, most of the hospitals have committees now that look at disparities. Uh, work is focused on data collection. The Boston Public Health Commission came up with a brilliant strategy of using regulation to force every hospital in Boston to collect race ethnicity data. Uh, and that has been really monumental and, and now is expanded through all of Massachusetts. Uh, statewide efforts, uh, there's a statewide commission um, that's in place and at part of that work of the commission as well as several grassroots organizations, they passed the disparities legislation uh, in 2007 which created the Office of Health Equity. Uh, some of you may have heard that several states now at the level of the Secretary of Health and Human Services or Secretary of Health are creating these Office of Health Equity, I believe uh, Pennsylvania, Colorado, uh, and a few other states are developing these. And then, um, as I mentioned, the race ethnicity collection of data is now throughout all of Massachusetts. Um, another sort of piece to think about as a population level results driven approach is some works that I've done with uh, my colleague um, Jolie Bain Pillsbury and, and Vicki Goddard Truitt around aligned actions for results. This is more a framework to think about how do you come together uh, folks from various backgrounds, various interests, uh, various agendas to think about creating aligned actions to achieve results. And what's interesting about this approach, and I've looked at a number of different things out in the field, is that it puts at the center of the effort a palpable sense of urgency. In other words, it's time bounded. You don't have two, three, four years to work on it. You actually have 14 months to do this. Um, so that just by the time boundary creates a sense of urgency. It also sets into motion the personal professional actions by asking people to commit to things as they're part of this group. And then the original intention from the Casey Foundation was to focus on children, families, and communities from the education perspective. Um, but now we're actually beginning to look at how this can be expanded to uh, health, health care, and health disparities. Um, the approach is built on four leadership competencies, a framework they call Results Accountability by Mark Friedman basically a seven-step process to get people from talk to measurable improvement. Um, there's uh, also the competency of looking at race class culture. Uh, what's fascinating from some of the work I've done in this is that people come up with great interventions and ideas but never talk about race and class and culture. And usually underneath there are some deep uh, concerns, deep issues, deep ideas, and often deep misperceptions. But the, the group has to have some kind of conversation around that to be able to get past that and think about how that impacts the work that you're trying to do. Uh, the third competency is around collaborative leadership, obviously making decisions together so that your work can be aligned to have more impact. And then the idea of leading from the middle. How do you begin to uh, enroll those to whom you're accountable? Um, as, as one of my colleagues says, you, you're never quite at the top. There's always somebody that's above you. So how do you figure out how to get them involved around this idea of leading from the middle? And it's based on the idea, um, what we call results-based facilitation model, and the strategy forum used that approach when we were uh, convening these 20 leaders in 2005. So in summary, um, you guys know many of the factors, so I'm not going to harbor on that. But the pieces that I would like to focus on is the use of data to target efforts and assess changes and disparities. Uh, one is critically important with limited resources that we've got to target our efforts. We don't really have the resources to kind of do a shotgun approach to address disparities. Um, two, also in the same current environment that we're in with limited resources, issues around accountability is very high. If you're given $10 million, can you actually demonstrate what change you've actually done? And do you have the data to be able to demonstrate that? Um, the last two, or last three, really, is more of the encouragement of being the squeaky wheel of the organization. More likely than not, from some of the work that I've done over the past years, it's usually one or two people that just will not let go of this issue. They just keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing, and all of you have a key role to play. And again, the, if we're going to really address disparities, collaborative leadership is going to be the key. And then the last two, just talking about disparities in health and health care, is that it's not about an issue of others. Uh, very often it's framed sometimes from even the policy, policy makers perspective that it's an issue of uh, other people and the reality is this is not other people this is all of us this is the issue of quality of care and this country was built on diversity this country was built on how do we all succeed and do well 
And eliminating disparities will not only improve the care of minorities, but all Americans. And if you look at some of the work that's currently going on around addressing disparities, what they're finding is by addressing disparities for a specific population, they're finding that the health outcomes improves of all the populations. So it's not an issue of just focusing on African Americans, uh, Latino or Hispanic Americans, et cetera, but really how do we all play a role because this is who we are as a country and what we're here to do. Thank you. Thank you.